If the thousands of hours of FIFA career mode that I've played have taught me anything, it's that money is quite important in football. It's how Barcelona built one of the best teams of all time, by investing almost every euro into La Masea. And this made me think, how easy would it be to build a world class FIFA academy while starting with exactly zero pounds? This is our goal, to have youth staff that are better than this by the end of season 2. It gives us 2 years to go from zero pounds all the way to world class. Even the poorest team in FIFA is way too rich for this challenge, so we're going to need to make our own team. For the next two seasons, we're going to be managing Broke FC, with our manager has no cash, and we'll be starting at the very bottom in League 2. I wanted this challenge to be as hard as possible, so we hired and fired away all of the original £1 million budget to make sure we had exactly £0 with no scouts and basically no hope of any progress. We even skipped joining any pre-season competitions because we want to be a truly broken team. After we'd wasted all of our cash, it was finally time for things to really begin. I mean look how bad this team is, it's 0.5 stars, our best 3 players are only 63 overall and the rest of the team is even worse. Naturally, our first action as manager is to try and sell the best players we have. They're literally our only hope of getting any kind of money and getting this team out of the gutter. Somehow, Accrington Stanley were actually interested in one of them. This helped us get our snowball to start moving. We sold Bowman for 200k and this gave us £160,000 to invest back into our club. What's the best way to make money in career mode? Youth staff. With Bowman's old wages added into our budget as well, we now had 300k to spend on staff. Louis Peacock was potentially our saviour, so we used all of our money to hire him and spent our last £90,000 sending him on a trip to Coventry. It's a terrible city and god knows how he's going to be spending £30,000 a month there, but I hope he is living like a king while finding us some youth players. A couple of days later, David Partridge also would leave the club. This means we now only have 25 players left, so this fire sale isn't actually a long term solution. We're going to do the same strategy again though. I know Jartanen heads over from Finland, but we can't actually send him back home, that's way too expensive. Instead of living in rural Norway for 3 months, we actually find out it's cheaper to send him to Tokyo for 9 months. It doesn't really make much sense, but we're not going to question it right now. With two scouts sent out, we needed some good players in their first reports, but not for using on the pitch, because we'd actually won two of our first three games. Could we actually be getting a surprise promotion? Well, one surprise promotion we had was Theodore Prince, because I was surprised that we didn't have enough cash to actually promote any other youth players. Had we just spent 400k to basically sign a single dude? Well, as soon as he's 16, we promoted him all the way into our squad. On his big day, where he joined up with the rest of the team, we betray him and put him on the transfer list. We need this money back. With a value of nearly 200k, just selling this one guy will not only pay for the scout that found him, but also the entire trip where he's going to find at least another dozen players. That's right, if we can sell this one borderline awful player, it will pay for the entire scouting trip where we actually have a 4% chance of finding an elite talent every single month. You might see where this is going to go. Within a week, Theodore Prince is off to Morecambe. I'm not sure where they got that much money because in real life they were fined by the EFL for not paying wages just two months ago. With one player out, we had a chance to promote the rest of our English and Japanese squad finds. We actually got quite lucky in Japan. Yuto Ito was betrayed in the exact same way as Price, but this guy was worth more. Sutton would go on to pay nearly 300k to buy a low rated 17 year old offers, which is totally bizarre behaviour for someone like Sutton. Another month passed and we had way less than 2 years to achieve our La Masea goals. The best day of the month was finally here though, Scout Report Day things were looking good. George Parr could actually be 94 rated, but to us, it's only really his value that matters. 240k will go a long way in League 2. It was at this point that I realised there's literally no point in not signing every single player. The AI will give you even 100k for the worst possible players. This means that we can have a minimum of £500,000 coming in every single month, while it will cost us just £105,000 in scout fees. If we wanted to reduce the risk, we could actually min-max this and lower the scout fees to 45k while getting in close to a million pounds in sales if we just got a third scout sent out to Asia. Every month was the same process. We would hire as many Asian teenagers as possible. As soon as they would land in the UK, we would sell them to various tiny teams in Ireland, Scotland and India. We were also getting double value because we were actually outside of a transfer window right now. That meant we get to keep the cash right now and also get to keep our players until January's transfer window opens. Things would keep rolling into November and we finally had the money to sign a third scout. We'd already recovered that original £1 million that we had to waste to get down to £0 in the first place and it had only taken us 4 months. From here on out, the snowball was only going to get bigger and bigger. 
The third scout was a big part of the snowball. Another Englishman, Noah Miller, joined, and we decided to gamble on getting a big talent. South America has the best talents, but also cost the most to scout. Even at £30,000 per scout per month though, we were comfortable we would be easily able to recover this with just a single player being signed. League 2 was about to be flooded with Argentinians and Brazilians. One simulated month later, and we were already into February and you could see things were getting big. Billy Butcher joined the boys at Broke FC and again he was instantly transfer listed. We did another mass listing of South Americans and of course we received another huge amount of bids. We had some players with less than 60 potential being sold for 100k while some slightly better players were going for around 220k every single sale. We finally broke our transfer sale record as well. Billy Butcher brought in 440k, but look at this list of players. We'd nearly signed 30 players this year and we'd already sold 28 of them, every single one of them for a massive profit. But the problem was, we were actually no closer to our goal. All of these players coming in didn't really help us on the pitch either. We were 19th in League 2 despite having one of the most prolific academies in the entire world. Who cares about our league position though, because Dundalk have just spent 130k on a 48 rated striker, which is more than 3 times their in real life transfer record. If we want to break one of our transfer records though, I think Kleber Carvalho might be the man to do it. He's 63 overall at 17 and Casimpasa see his talent and that's 1.1 million pounds heading into our bank account. That might not even seem like that much money, but to put it into perspective, our league finish actually earns us less than that. It's a huge bid for League 2, and of course we're going to accept it. We just about survive as a manager into our second year, but we definitely need to do better on the pitch next year if we want a third season. We know we can keep sold players for months, so let's just invest as much as the £6.3 million budget as we can into new scouts. Peacock and Yartanen have been here since nearly the start, but we have to improve if we want to keep things moving. Let's do the most ridiculous thing we can, which is signing a youth scout with 5 star judgement and 5 star experience while in League 2. These guys are overpowered even in the Premier League, so surely they were going to be absolutely unstoppable for us. As our two new scouts came in, over 20 players would leave on the 1st of July. This means that our squad is now paper thin. We don't really care about it though, we just keep doing the same 4 things. We simulate a month, we check the youth reports, we transfer list as many as we can, and then we agree every single transfer offer we receive. Our first Argentinian scout report comes back, and we have potentially 5 players with over 60 overall, which is more than good enough for League 2. We also have one that could be 75. Of course, they don't turn out this good, but 5 star scouts are just the absolute best. Our strategy smashed our main board objectives within the first 3 days of the transfer window, and then things started to change. Lots of the bids that came in started to seem to fail, lots of our players had really low morale, and this was definitely affecting things on the pitch. After another dozen players left in January, we pushed our budgets all the way up to £12 million, and finally, we had nearly the perfect set of youth scouts. That one star on Manage is going to bother me a lot, but the board were actually bothered by me more. A second season in 21st place, with months of losses, is never going to end well. We definitely hit our target of being better than Barcelona, but we're also going to be unemployed for the rest of the year. We're terminated, but we're proud. And that's the story of how we went from £0 to having the world's best academy without ever actually really winning matches in League 2. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different to stuff that I normally make because we didn't actually play a single match. But thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. Or suggest ideas in the comments below. Thanks and goodbye.